During this lecture, we will discuss the concept of the Dirac delta function. This concept is a little tricky to define mathematically, so I encourage you to read formal texts to better understand the math behind the concept. To begin our discussion of the Dirac delta function, we will look at a rectangle that has an area of 1. If we decrease the width of this rectangle, we will need to increase the height of the rectangle to maintain the same area. As the width goes to zero, the height will approach infinity. A Dirac delta function is essentially such a rectangle, with nearly zero width and infinite height. We represent the delta function simply as an arrow labeled by its area. If we multiply the delta by a number, we simply scale the area of the delta function by that number. If we add or subtract from the argument of the delta function, we shift the function. Because the delta function has zero width and area one, it has some unique mathematical properties. If we integrate a function f multiplied by the delta function, we essentially sample f at the location of the delta function. We can sample at zero, or we can sample at any offset, c. In the discrete time domain, we use a related function called the Kronecker delta, or unit pulse. The unit pulse is defined as being one at n equals to zero, and zero everywhere else. We will see the delta function constantly in digital signal processing. Because the Fourier transform of cosine omega naught t is a delta function at positive omega naught and a delta at negative omega naught. Each of these delta functions has area one half.